everybody a little bit ago that this is going to be really short. That's kind of the way I am. <laughs> so, so I'm not, yeah, short and to the point. So I'm not making any apologies, any apologies for this. So, but I felt like this is what God gave me, so this is what I want to give you. I don't want to give you something that he didn't give me. So, and it's kind of evangelistic, so I just kind of named it He Is. He is God. He is good. He is love. He is peace. He is divine healing. He is prosperity. He is power. He is the one that created everything. And if that doesn't want to, if that doesn't make you want to know him more, then I don't know what would, but it sure makes me want to know him more. And um, one of my favorite verses is in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonder of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in the same way come to know the power, the outflowing from his resurrection, which he exerts, itself over believers. And you might say, well, how can I know him? How can I know this God? Well, you know what? God says if you will diligently seek him, you will know him. You can know him. And what we need to do is, in, as in our seeking is to fall in love with God. Because God says he commands us to love him with all of our hearts, with all of our strength, with all of our being. And the second commandment, our neighbors as ourselves. And I was reading in Isaiah the other day, and I found a verse about God that just, you know, I've always known, or not always, but I always, for a long time I've known God is love and that he loves us. But the extent of that love, I really haven't really known, and whether I ever will know the completeness of it, but this verse just struck me and just kind of made me know him just a little better. It's Isaiah thirty eighteen. It says, The Lord waits expectantly and longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you, For the Lord is God of justice. Blessed are those who long for him, since he will never fail them. And I thought about this great God that has all the love, that has created everything. He longs to be good to us. He longs to bless us. we, We have longed for him in here. I know we have, you know, and in our private lives and everything. But to think that this God, who is all of these things and more, he longs to bless us. That's how full of love he is. It's like he just overflows with love. He is love. And it's just like a glass of water. You keep pouring in it, it's going to overflow. And that's how I see God. He's just got so much love in him, he just overflows and he's looking for people to overflow on, you know. And as God is waiting expectantly and longing to show his goodness. It's his goodness. It's not something we do. It's something he loves to do. Not that we deserve it and are good, but that he is good. He is love. And then again, in um, Ephesians 2, 4, it says, God is rich. God, so rich is he in his mercy because and to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. So it's not anything we can do. I mean, absolutely nothing. But it's his intense love for us 
and for all his creation that he wants to pour out on us. He's addicted to love. Yeah. He waits. He wants us to get this because he is looking for a bride for his glorious son whom he loves. And, you know, it even says in the Bible that he loves us as much as he loves his son, which that's just uncomprehendable almost. But that's, that's because he's love. And I just want people to get that, that he is love. He is not anything evil. He does no evil. He is God. He is love. That's all he is. That's all he can give. He just flows with love all over. He's looking for a people who will love him with all their hearts, with all their strength, with all their mind, with all their might. The bride is Jesus' inheritance. So doesn't that just make you want to be what God wants you to be, to become like him? But to be the bride, we must have a relationship with God. How do we do that? God sent Jesus on the earth to be an example for us how to live our lives, how to learn to love, how to be just like Jesus. He loved us so, so much. He loved us so much, Jesus did, that he removed our sins. He took our sin on the cross, removed it, and he gave us his righteousness. And now we have no condemnation. God doesn't look at us as being wrong in anything. We are forgiven. He doesn't punish us. He leads us and guides us and directs us. He turns us somehow by just um, working with us and speaking to us and showing us his love and everything, so... And when we come into a realization of how big and how wonderful and how awesome and love, loving this God is, we're born again. We become different people because we're just born all over again. We, we have a new life. Everything changes. We come out of darkness and into the light. His word becomes alive to us. We get into the word and it starts speaking to us. It comes alive and it speaks to us. Like I said, this is a short message. But I just want people to realize how loving God is. That he just pours out. That's, just, that's who he is. He just, he just pours out love all the time. It just excels and comes to us. There's no darkness in him. No evil. And like that sign out there says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. I, you know, it's really on my heart that people know that he's love. And I don't think... We can really comprehend that love until we see God and see how he operates in things. Things change when he, when he walks into the room. They change. And he's only good. So that's about all I have. And if anybody else has anything... <laughs> I don't know if this is just, well, I think this is for everyone in this room. <clears throat> but this goes right along with what you've already preached. And I didn't know whether to get up and say it before you started or afterwards, and now I know it was for afterwards. But this morning, <clears throat> I was watching a certain teacher on, on the Internet, and he was talking about uh, one of our hindrances to 
healing, getting our healing, was our familiarity. That we have become familiar with Jesus and we're not realizing how powerful and how wonderful and who, who he really is. And that really struck me because I, I know that we do this. And so when we sang that last song, and I don't want to be familiar with Jesus. I want to be absolutely intimate with Jesus. There's a whole lot of difference in knowing someone when you see them on the street, knowing them as your friend, and being a part of them, being so close inside that you know what they're thinking and what they're doing and how they're moving. And this morning when we sang that last song and Brenda came over to me, and I had a real rough day yesterday, and those are the times when you really start to question, am I just whistling up a rope here? Am I just believing something that I'm just hoping for and not, you know, this morning when she came over and, and caused me to stand up in the fire, I realized that yesterday I was in the fire and I was in there. I kept on going in there and I, I was determined to come today no matter how bad it was. If if it carried over into the day. And then all these people started surrounding me. And I remembered what this teacher said, and he said that he didn't recognize, you don't recognize me. And I heard God say, do you not know when he says, do you not know, it's like he's saying to me, you should know this. And I should. But he said, do you not know that this is my healing that surrounds you? These uh, are me. These are me. And we are here never to be able to let you down. Never to stop. Never to give up on you. That's what he's doing, but he is in mm -hmm. these people. Yep. And I, I realized that, you know, that James isn't just my son. You know, he's, I'm familiar with mm -hmm. him, and I love him very, very much, but he is part of the healing that surrounds me. Brenda is not my daughter-in-law. She is God with skin on and that without he's never going to let us go he's never going to let us go he'll never let you be without someone to surround you with his healing and with his love yep. and that is the goodness of God he's not going to let that happen if this church burned down and everybody in it were destroyed I'm sure he'd find someone to come and the ones that us that could be left, he'd find someone for them to surround them with God's healing, with his love, with his Holy Spirit. And there is no other way without the Holy Spirit. There just is no other way. But I just feel like this was a really good message. This is what people need to know. That it's not, you're not looking for somebody out there that's smarter than you, that knows more Bible, that that is... Uh, some big shot from Timbuktu that came here and going to give you this great big message and then leave you here. God is in every one mm -hmm. of the people that surround us yes. here. And every one of them. And we need to recognize them. You know, it's not just the candy man or it's not just the nail tech. It's just people that have a heart for God. And they don't have, even have to be perfect. He says, don't you know? He said this to me. Do you not know that this is the healing that surrounds you? And I thought, oh, yes, I know it. <laughs> yes. But don't you think God handpicked each one of us 
to be yeah. here to be together, you know. And and when he say, says, oh, ye of little faith, don't you think it's because we're so familiar with him sometimes yes. that we just don't, we don't recognize who he really he is? is. There's the God. There's God. When you just said that, oh, he of little faith, oh, ye of little faith, I, I was just reading about um, when Jesus took the disciples in the boat and the storm mm-hmm. came. They saw, I mean, they were right there with him. They knew him. They saw what he could do. And yet when the storm came, he had to remind them, you of little faith, I'm right here with you. And they're, I yeah, think he has to sometimes. They're with him every day, and they just become too familiar yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But we do too. And I was thinking that song, too, that, the, that last song we did, too, that goes so well with this because he's looking for a people who will stand up in the fire, and sometimes you have to have a body to hold the body up. <laughs> and then the other song, Brothers and Sisters, yes. you know, fight, for your, fight for your brothers and sisters and fight for revival. There was something strategic in that whole thing because... There was something strategic in that whole thing because I wanted to come over here really bad, but I felt like I was supposed to stay right where I was at. So, and I don't know why that would be, but who cares why? When she was talking about the healing being in the people, I was thinking about that time we were at World Revival Church Mm-hmm. And you had been sick the whole weekend, and Sharon and I were up there laughing, and God told you, go up there, the, your healing's in the laughter. Yeah, I thought of that too. And you did, and you got healed. Yes, I did. So, yes. Um, and then, too, I was, um, I heard somebody yesterday who was speaking to a bunch of people in God's name, and they were going on and on and on about people dying and how we don't know when God's going to take this person or that person, and they said it several times, you know, we don't know when God's going to take it, we don't understand, it makes us sad, said that many times, and then at the end they said, you know, but we just have to trust him, and it's like, okay, I don't want to serve a God and trust a God who is going to kill somebody around me any moment and take them away from me, that's not who he is, so I was wondering, like, if you would read that scripture in Isaiah again, because that does not at all sound to me like a God who is just sitting there waiting to take somebody away from you. And we need that doctrine needs to be squashed in the body, body of Christ yeah. big time. Yeah. It, like, I'm still amazed at how rampant and big it is that people think. I mean, if, okay, think about this. If we had friends that at any moment would kill us or our family or somebody around us, would we want to love them? Would we want to trust them? That is just ridiculous. It's not even logical. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. I know when babies die or something, you know, they say, well, God just needed him in heaven or something like that, you know. And you think, how cruel can you be, you right. know? Right. Uh, here's this verse. The Lord waits expectantly and longs to be gracious to you. And therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who long for him since he will never fail them. That verse just stuck out to me that day too because I could just see him just waiting to bless somebody. I mean, he, he, it's like he can't stand it. I want to I be good to you, you know. Yeah, yeah. And believe me, oh ye of little faith, I'm yeah. trying so hard to be good to you, and you just won't believe me. And we've been talking a lot lately in our Tuesday group and with each other of pretty much the only command Jesus gave people all the time was only believe. Yeah. You know, and we're always trying to look at we need to get rid of this sin and that sin. And I'm not saying we don't need to get rid of that stuff because it is killing us, but Jesus was always saying only believe. And mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest sin of all is we don't believe that he has already provided the healing and yeah. everything that Doesn't we Doesn't he say to strive to believe? Isn't that, that what our work is supposed to be, is to believe, you know? So. Uh, 
Oh, Bethel, that was that was so good for me. Because so often, like when I go to the nursing home, the Lord takes me back and he says, the basics, my son, the basics. Mm -hmm. And that's what you brought. And so often we need to hear that yes, more do. completely and understand it more fully because so many people in this world don't honestly think there is a single person yeah. here or anywhere that could possibly love them. You know, they, you know, that's the reason he takes me back to the basics so often is because he wants people to understand he does love them, that he loves everyone. I mean, I read the Bible and he's talking to the Sadducees and Pharisees. And some people would look at that and say, well, he just called them a bad name. He called them a viper or something like that. But the reason, the whole reason is stop, you know? Listen, I love you. And that should be enough. I love even you, the one who is trying to kill me. I love you. Love is the strongest thing. Mm-hmm. And it is meant to tie us all together. It is meant to be the tie that can't be broken. And we have to realize it's because that's who he is, not for any other reason, you know. That's who he is. And he's so full, <laughs> so full. Anybody else? Okay, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you. Father, we know you love us, God, but to the extent of that love, God, we just haven't comprehended it. We just thank you, God, though, that you are revealing it to us more and more and more and more, God. And whether only one person understands us today or gets a realization of it today, God, it's worth talking about. I know that Peter preached and 3,000 were saved, Father God. But you're just as concerned, Father God, for one person as you are for the whole world, Father God. And Father, we just thank you that your love does pour out. And God, we want to be under that fountain. God, we just love you, and we love being blessed by you. And I don't, don't want that to sound selfish or something, Father God, but... We want your goodness. There's nothing like your goodness, Father God. And you and Jesus had such a relationship, God. Your relationship was the best ever, Lord God, the most loving. And Father, we want to be that way too. We want to we want to be your bride, Father. We want to want to absorb your love, Lord God, and become like you. And Father, we know that this is your desire too. And thank you for putting that desire in our hearts, God. We just want to say thank you. We love you. We're grateful to you, God. You are all you said you were, God. And we give you all the glory and all the praise, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Where is it?